now giving a homily to a parish community on that gospel, I think I would be filling uh, with what I had to say with a sense of encouragement that Jesus is so extraordinarily generous. Not only is he feeding everybody to the limits that they need and require any food, there's loads left over. And how that really should affect the way that we see Jesus. Not someone we bargain with who's a bit resentful about how he loves us. No, he's overwhelming in his generosity. So that would be my line to a parish community, but I'm talking to the participants in a rather important justice and peace conference, and I think there's a rather more radical way of looking at that gospel. Jesus is most definitely very generous. He provides in every way. In that miracle scene, he will have relied on the disciples to do the distribution of the food. And they did it excellently and gathered up the scraps left over. What I have to say is, given the world in which we live, I think we, as disciples collectively, are failing to distribute the food that we have, the wealth and the resources that we have. It's as if, in that gospel scene, if we were to rewrite it, the disciples said, oh, that's good, there's lots of food, let's sit down, we'll eat it, and then clear away. But no, we have got to remember that as disciples, as missionary disciples, as Pope Francis continually reminds us, we are part of that distribution of God's love and generosity and material wealth around in the world in which we live. Because we're living at a really strange, uniquely strange time, aren't we? We've got a pandemic that knows no geographical boundaries, but of course it's going to hit the poorest nations worse than the prosperous ones, as is always the way. We've got climate change, which has been affecting people for many years in the global south, but we've rather pushed that on one side. We haven't really been noticing it because it hasn't affected us, but now it is. A very prosperous part of California destroyed by wildfires. Western Canada with heating, Overheating, which has not even been predicted by the scientists as happening with climate change for the next 10 years, but it happened months ago. And then, in the heart of Europe, yes, floods. The idea that, what was the statistic? That three months of rain fell in one day in Germany. And then we get China where they had all that rain that fell on Germany and more in one hour. And that they've had more rain in one day than they've had in a whole year. These are extraordinary events, and they go beyond anything that the scientists were really expecting. We've got to move. But Pope Francis says everything's connected. The pandemic and if we're going to save everybody, we've got to make sure that everybody is saved. We've got to make sure that that vaccination goes worldwide. If we're going to sort out climate change in any way, we've all got to engage in it. We've got to make changes. We've got to do something about poverty. And it's not just poverty out there. I mean, there's that awful statistic I read the other day, that the ten richest people in the world have an accumulated wealth of three billion of the poorest. That's beyond calculation. I'm no mathematician, that's horrible. And yet, it's not just out there, poverty. This week we're told that one third of infant school children are below the poverty line. We've got a lot to do. What is God telling us? Well, I think he's speaking through Pope Francis very clearly when he says we've got to start thinking globally. We can't just solve the problem for ourselves, look in on ourselves, make sure the vaccines are great for just for us. It won't stop climate change. It won't have much impact on poverty. No, we've got to be rethinking who we are, what we're about, as a global family, our brothers and sisters and our common home. Pope Francis has been so clear about this from when he wrote Laudato Si, repeating it time and time again in all his other encyclicals. Does it look overwhelming? It certainly looks challenging. But Pope Francis is always clear that we live in hope. That's what our faith is all about. I love his definitions. 
when, when asked, what do you think the church is like? You didn't come up with some great theological, something well beyond my understanding of theological terms of the supreme triumph of the apocalyptic God of Christ redeemed. Or, he said, no, it's a bit like a field hospital after a battle where people are coming to have their lives saved, not their cholesterol checked. <laughs> and when he speaks about the Eucharist, as not a reward for good behaviour, but as food for our spiritual journey. This man is prophetic. I'm, I, I just feel so humbled by him because he's affected me and the way I think. I feel personally so full of gratitude for Pope Francis because he seems to have taken away so much of the overriding language and the rules and the regulations. Yeah, we need rules and regulations. He's happy about that. But they mustn't cloud those basic fundamental principles which we need to get back to, which starts with the dignity, the God-given dignity of every human being. They're all our brothers and sisters. So we've got a lot to do. The missionary disciples. And he keeps telling us that each and every one of us can have an impact. And that's most certainly true. And I see here people wanting to make an impact and making an impact already, but we've got to spread that. We've got to leave a lot to the politicians, but we can't leave it all. And we've got to make sure that the politicians are doing what they're elected to do and what the people want them to do. So we've got our agenda, but we're not starting from nowhere. We have faith and we have our prayer. Let's never neglect that sense of the importance of prayer in what we're doing, what we're trying to do. Because when we're open to God using us, he can use us in ways that we'll never really be able to measure or appreciate or understand. He'll be working through us very powerful in, powerfully indeed. Thank you for who you are, what you stand for, what you want, what you think is important. Let's allow that prophetic mission of Pope Francis to be part of our lives so that each and every one of us, step by step, are making the difference which will make our common home a better place. But we will respect the dignity of each and every one of our brothers and sisters and that we will, in some way, maybe this is the decade where we really begin to recognise the global qualities of the world in which we live and how we can mend a broken home.